manufacturing is also manufacturing are also there okay and uh, so maybe i'll try to give some hospital and healthcare examples also when we are uh, talking about uh, lean and six sigma we have people from manufacturing oil and gas as well okay and uh, we have people from it logistics i'm doing uh, uh, three projects six in uh, saudi arabia aramco then we have got sabic then we have king fahad medical city then we have got uh, uh, otham nakal uh, you know almost from all industries riyad bank many banks in fact and a uh, lot of theme parks ferrari world warner brothers dp world so we have got a lot of examples but anyway i'll not be focusing too much of examples today we'll be learning some tools and techniques for today's yellow belt session we'll try to teach you what is basic of lean six sigma what is dmac how do you do a project and uh, we will do a project together so as we as we learn the tools and techniques we will also do a project let us have another uh, poll please which department you belong to so you may be from oil and gas but which department you are from you may be from hospital but which department you are from so this will help me to so a lot of people are from hr today okay i don't know why <laughs> today okay a uh, quality okay a lot of people from quality operations okay now people are you know they are uh, writing okay engineering as well engineering procurement operations well in our past uh, yellow belt uh, training sessions i have taken examples of procurement and last uh, yellow belt i talked uh, talked about oil and gas rig move uh, reduction and uh, in the last one last to last one so all of our, our yellow belts are recorded and you will get the recording if you attend the full program till end you will definitely get the recording and also we will even give you a very very good opportunity to join our green belt sessions if you stay till the end so thanks a lot and uh, we can have if there is another poll we can just use that as well okay so thanks a lot and uh, you can just uh, you can just poll uh, just uh, you know answer this question also okay so we'll start with what is lean six sigma so as you were taking part in the polls i just wanted to tell you about the topics which we are going to discuss today we have uh, introduction of course i'll introduce myself then after that i'll talk about lean six sigma benefits then also we'll talk about uh, what are the basics of lean and six sigma after that we will talk about dmac so if you claim that you are a yellow belt and of course after 2 uh, hours of training 2 and 1/2 hours of training you will be a yellow belt you should know dmac define measure analyze improve and control so thank you thanks for participating in the poll and uh, after that we'll talk more about some applications i'll show you some case studies i'll show you how lean six sigma is implemented in the organization so if you choose to stay for half an hour more then i will also share some case studies so two hours we will learn lot of tools and techniques we'll learn about dmag we'll learn about the tools and techniques used in dmag define measure analyze improve and control and after that i'll start showing some case studies and some examples also you can always follow us on the youtube uh, if you subscribe to our youtube channel this recording will be available to you so you just go and subscribe to the youtube channel right away not only this a lot of other training programs power bi free of cost then uh, we have got uh, introduction to data analytics introduction to machine learning uh, we have got 
project management, PMP, all these trainings are totally available to you free of cost. You can always have a look at it. So let me start with the introduction and uh, let me welcome everyone. Uh, these videos I had created during uh, the pandemic. Just uh, let me show some of the videos and also a lot of other videos which are related to tools and techniques. Today, of course, Yellow Belt, we don't have a lot of tools and tech to, to see uh, green belt and black belts actually learn all the tools and techniques of lead six sigma yellow belt are aware of these tools but green belts and black belts can use these tools so if you are interested in further studying just subscribe to the channel and you will get access to lots and lots of videos we'll send you the links and relevant links also but let me welcome you let me welcome you formally Hi, welcome to Annexus. Annexus has been consulting and training the professionals in the organizations around the world since 2006 and we have trained more than 150,000 people and consulted for more than 500 organizations which includes Fortune 100 organizations too. I'm Amitabh Saxena and I have designed this program based on my 30 years of experience while working in various industries across many domains. The whole NXS team once again joins me in welcoming you. So these videos were made uh, three years ago. So now I have 33 years of experience. Thank you. So we have got uh, trainings uh, and offices worldwide. Uh, I'm heading the Middle East uh, operations and uh, I'm also heading the Middle, Middle, East, Middle East Consulting Division. And... Uh, Apart from that, Australia as well. We are we are present in Australia. We are present in uh, Europe. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the the uh, certification is provided by AEC, uh, which is a European company, a European certification body. Uh, we are also affiliated to different uh, PMI, IASSC, CSC, uh, whatever you know. See, basically, the certification bodies are so many. Uh, you can go to anybody and uh, get the exam. We, we provide you from AEC and Access Europe certification, and it is worldwide valid. So certificates received from uh, us are worldwide valid in lots of companies, including Aramco, Sabic, Nakel, almost all the reputed companies, they accept and approve our certificates. I was a chemical engineer in 1990-2000. For 10 years, I worked as a chemical engineer in petrochemical companies. I used to work a lot, but was earning very less. So I thought of doing some certifications. In fact, one fine day, my company announced that they are going to select the top performers, the top 10 performers, to undergo a training called the Green Belt and Black Belt Training. So I thought I was one of the top 10 performers and I was expecting my nomination. But unfortunately, the company did not think so. And they did not nominate me. And uh, I was a little bit uh, disappointed. But still, one good thing I saw was that the people who underwent the training, they were able to solve the company's problems very easily. They were not afraid of problems. In fact, they were looking for problems to solve. Uh, they, they were using a project's approach to solve the problem. So whatever was the problem, whatever the company was facing, uh, they converted these problems or issues to improvement opportunities and into projects. And Lean and Six Sigma actually is nothing but converting your improvement opportunities, converting your problems into projects. Now, what is the de basic definition? Just a minute. Are you, uh, uh, are you able to hear me? I think uh, uh, you, you're able to hear me. Yes. Yeah, so I think those, some, some of you who are not able to hear me, they can increase the volume. Uh, because some of you are telling that you know you're not able to hear, or you can just plug, uh, just log out and log in. It may it may work. It may work better. So thank you, Sanover, Abar, Muhammad, uh, so many of you. Uh, thanks for responding. Visual, oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Anthony, uh, Abdul. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so as I was telling about my story, uh, uh, yeah, Ashwini, hi. <laughs> so as I was telling about my story, uh, you know, uh, I, I I saw that, you know, these people who were 
certified green belts and black belts. They were able to solve the problem so easily. And data analytics was the key there. You know, they were making, uh, they were giving solutions based on the data analysis. They were, they would collect the data, analyze the data. So today I'm going to show you this whole approach, especially emphasizing on define, measure, and analyze. Yeah. We'll be focusing on these three uh, approach, three three phases of uh, a Lean and Six Sigma project. So, so in this case, uh, what happened? Uh, after some time, I thought that the next batch, my name will be recommended, but unfortunately, they never had the second batch <laughs> because what happened? These 10 black bulls who were trained and who did the projects, they got much better jobs in other companies. <laughs> so they were like... Uh, uh, very, uh, as they say, say, selling like hotcakes, you know. So the salaries increased. Other companies, they just welcomed them with a lot of great hike in salary. And the company, you know, they never had the second training, <laughs> thinking that people will leave them. But then I thought that let me do the training myself, like, you know, attend the training. I've searched for those days, very few companies used to have this training programs. Nowadays, it's coming to your home very easily, but those days and all the certifications are coming to your home, sitting at home, you can appear for the certification, you can uh, do the training like the way you are doing it. And of course, I would like you to welcome to my training, uh, although we have got many trainers. And uh, but uh, if you are thinking of joining, you just uh, So, uh, so what I thought was I actually traveled. I searched for some you know place where I could get the certificate. I invested some some good money, and then completed a project. And as I said with before you, I am a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt Data Scientist PMP CPSQ with thirty three years of experience. Consulted more than 200 organizations around the world, which includes lots and lots of great, well-known companies. Some of the companies' name I just told you because most of you are from Middle East right now. So I just named the companies from Middle East. But if you are from Europe, uh, then uh, we have Novartis in Switzerland. Then I have got Maersk in Denmark, in Australia, more than 100 companies. And I have 33 years of experience, so I have got... You know, a wide variety of experience in different countries that uh, naturally you, when you become old like me 55 year old you will also have that much of experience don't worry uh, but uh, well I, what, why I am telling you all these things because you can also become like this and much more you know there are a lot of opportunities like this uh, to become because every company is looking for people who can solve problems Every company is looking for people who can improve the processes. So today, I'm going to show you with the help of some examples. We'll imagine that we are doing a project. And all of us will imagine that we are doing a project. So after half an hour, I'll start doing a project together with you. I'll show you some tools, techniques. Uh, because you are a yellow belt, you will not have to do with me. You don't have to you know, learn anything, you know. But if you're a green belt or a black belt, when you're coming to my green belt, black belt sessions, I make you do the work. You know, we, we do the project together. You know, we, we share the screens. I tell you like what button to click. We'll tell you, teach you the software. Today, I'll show you the software. But we give you the software. We teach you the software. Software in the sense is very simple software. It's not a, like something like Excel sheet. And you can solve any problem in any industry. And that's the beauty of Lean and Six Sigma. So you can achieve that too. And you are going to learn not only from me, but also uh, not only from my experience, but also my students now. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, I have trained a lot of people. They are not CEOs and a lot of great work and great jobs they have done. I'm even learning from them and you are going to learn from uh, me. Uh, some photographs just to prove that I have been training around the world. You know, I also take pride in telling that I am the... I was the first person to conduct any Lean and Six Sigma Black Belt in whole uh, Black Belt training program in the whole of Middle East. And it is on record, Gulf News, all the TV channels, etc. They covered this. Uh, yeah, so I hope you got convinced with so many photographs, so many awards, and uh, uh, even uh, uh, 
I, I like lots of uh, I wish to congratulate uh, all TV programs, business channels. From Annexus. All the best. Uh, you know, we have done lots of stuff. Anyway, uh, spoken in ESQ American on twenty first of May two thousand nineteen. Uh, I'm going to speak and uh, did railways from Saudi Arabia, India, and the America. They are all our clients. Uh, so. A lot of video credentials it's are there. Honor. I'll not be playing all of them because it will take a long time because we have to learn a lot today. I keep writing newspaper articles, Gulf News, Times of India. Uh, Deputy Health Minister of uh, Saudi Arabia, Dr. Tarif Alama, uh, has uh, some good words for us. Uh, whole Ministry of Health. We have, uh, Dr. Almost Tarif Alama with us. Uh, uh, everyone uh, from his ministry uh, they have attended uh, my training uh, program and taken certificate uh, from Annex uh, so Europe. Like and uh, about... apart from that, you know, Dr. Muhammad Abdullah Ali, uh, who is the spokesperson of Ministry of Health, etc. So we have got CEO of NACL, uh, we have got CEO, like very senior managers of Sabic Aramco talking about our uh, good credentials. So uh, well, let, let us start learning now. You know, once you, <laughs> I hope you are convinced now. You are in the safe hands in terms of knowledge of lean and six sigma. Can you please tell me uh, what is common? What do you see is common here? A manufacturing company improves production by thirty percent. A hospital reduces discharge time of patients from three hours to fifteen minutes. Sixty-four percent reduction in recruitment time in multinational companies. Hotel improves customer experience and increases bookings to almost two times. A bank reduces errors and cycle times by 80% with enhanced C uh, customer satisfaction index. Insurance claims time reduced by 70%. Can you tell me what is common? The efficiency back, Daniela is telling us, okay. Leo Dakani is telling percentage of improvements. Nikhil Deer is telling data, okay. Yeah. By the way, I have also uh, very recently presented in Belgrade and then very recently presented in Berlin on Lean and Six Sigma conferences, very recently presented in London. National Healthcare Service of London, uh, of, of UK, they are also our clients. So KPI, Ahmed is telling improvement, Anthony is telling KPI, Salam, Das is telling production, Abdul is telling time saving, Nikhil is telling data. Okay, Mohanad is telling... Uh, uh, exceptional results. By the way, Dr. Mohanad Al Gurwa from King Fahad Medical City, he was my, in the first batch, you know, oh, I, that's how I remember his name, right? Ahmad Ashwini, all of you are right. Yeah, all of you are right. Bilal, all of you are right. And one more thing which is common here they are all Six Sigma improvement projects. They are all lean and six sigma improvement projects. So when you want to improve something, when you want to improve something, you need to convert into a project. So today, our customer experience index is on one to five scale, maybe 3.2. We would like to increase the 3.2 to 3.8 in the next six months. Project has got a starting point and project has got an end point. Project is a one-time endeavor. So this is an improvement project. So each and everything has been converted into an improvement project. And then in that case, you can do this improvement. And we have done so many, so many of them in so many companies. So what does Lean and Six Sigma do for you? Lean and Six Sigma helps in reducing the costs. It helps in reduction of defects. It helps reduction of waste. We are talking about the waste. Waste means, you know, not the waste which we throw in the dustbin, but the waste which is present in our processes. So lots of things like movement, unnecessary rework. In fact, rework is always unnecessary to be very precise. So any rework, anything starting with re is a waste. So it reduces the rework, it reduces the cycle time. It increases your quality, improves the quality, production efficiency, productivity, customer satisfaction, capacity, profitability, resilience. Very, very recently, we did a prog uh, we, we did a uh, project in uh, Aramco. We uh, 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 you know we can't tell ex exactly the names of the project, but you know something like you know in, in the maintenance department, 
So uh, sometimes uh, the, the utilization of the maintenance uh, equipment, it is not to the maximum. We optimized it. Uh, in one of the warehouses, in one of the biggest in, uh, retail companies, uh, we uh, were able to improve the productivity and reduce the transportation costs also. Uh, in uh, three hospitals, major hospitals, uh, all affiliated to Ministry of Health, uh, we have uh, reduced the infection rates. And in fact, when we say we have reduced, it's not that we have reduced. We train. I have trained those people and they have done the improvement projects. Okay. Because today we have got people from different industries, a mix of uh, different industries. Uh, the project which we will take up today uh, to uh, improve uh, would be uh, uh, it would be uh, uh, reducing the recruitment cycle time in an organization. Okay, so we'll take you through this project and we'll do the project together. So you learn these tools and techniques, you know, as a hands-on. Uh, I will do the project for you. I'll, I'll do all the exercises because you are a yellow belt. You don't have to do anything. Green belts have to do, you know, I, I'll, I'll make you do these things so that they get engraved in your mind. That's the best part. Uh, today also you'll get the recording. You can watch the recording. But the best learning happens when you do this. Do, do this with me, yeah. Th that happens in green belt and black belt. And you can become a skilled person to improve any process in any industry. That's the best part of being a lean and six sigma green belt and a black belt. Okay, it started in 1979 in one of the board meetings. Um, Bob Galvin, who was the CEO of Motorola, uh, he made a commitment that, uh, you know, I will improve everything by five times in Motorola. And he invited suggestions how we could do that. And uh, Bill Smith and Michael Harry, who were the uh, who were the engineers, who were doing some improvement projects, they came out with some solutions. And they said that why don't we apply statistical quality techniques, SQC, and a project improvement uh, methodology to improve our processes. And they showed some good results. They said that in the last two years, we have done three, four projects and they have really given good results to the company. Bob Galvin was so much impressed with this. And he told uh, Bill Smith and Michael Harry that, uh, well, uh, you know, I don't want uh, only two, three people doing this such good work. I want 500, 600 people doing the same thing in Motorola. And Bill Smith and Michael Larry designed this methodology. But some of you are asking, uh, are these uh, recordings available, etc.? Yes, they are available. They are available in different forms. In fact, they're available. I'll just show you. I'll not, uh, uh, you know, the whole uh, program is very much available. And just now I told you certain things, you know, it's all available. So don't worry. In, uh, in, in, in This is a, another way. Like, just just have a look not love a person who can help the company it also improves the quality production efficiency productivity customer satisfaction capacity profitability and resilience and which ceo would not love a person who can help the company achieve all these things so well lean and six month green bills and black bills are those individuals who can do improvement projects in the organization by choosing improvement opportunities and converting these improvement opportunities into projects. It all started in Motorola when Bob Galvin, the CEO, took a challenge saying that I would like to improve everything by five times in the organization. And he was told about... So I, th I hope you got the point, right? So don't worry, don't worry. Everything is recorded. Not only recorded, some much better video where I have dressed up a little much better. <laughs> In a, in a better way with a tie, a suit, etc. That is also available. So lots of knowledge we have. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get all access to all the videos. Don't worry. And uh, I request everyone not to ask these questions again and again because, uh, you know, just be assured. So focus on the learning and there are a lot of tools coming up. So let us focus on that. Yeah, so as I was telling, you know, uh, Bill Smith and Michael Harry, they rolled out Lean Six Sigma. They called this as uh, six Sigma, and now I will not be able to explain all the details why it is Six Sigma, etc. in yellow belt, uh, but uh, it is something to do with standard deviations, etc. But uh, for the time being, I'll explain what is 
you what are uses of standard deviation at a later stage today but uh, uh, the best thing the best part about implementing this methodology was that lots of people did projects and Motorola became the first recipient of Malcolm Bollage Award, which is the highest quality award in US. It was instituted in, 19, instituted in 1988, and the first award went to Motorola. So Bob Galvin told it is all because of Six Sigma. So GE Jack Welch uh, was very impressed with this, and he said that I will also implement Lean Six Sigma and GE. And in fact, he was so serious about it that he said, uh, and he told uh, his all employees that if you are not a green belt, you will not be promoted. Then they started telling their suppliers also that if you want to win business or do business with the GE, you have to, uh, you know, implement Lean and Six Sigma. So everyone started asking them, what is Six Sigma? And then they would send their master black belts to teach them. That's how Six Sigma spread across various countries, various companies. And today, as we speak, most of the organizations in the world, we don't know the organizations have implemented Lean and Six Sigma. Now, let us try to understand what is Lean and what is Six Sigma. Nowadays, everyone talks about Lean and Six Sigma. They don't differentiate because whatever improves the organization is good for us, isn't it? So here, if I look at what is Lean, so I will explain, or I'll give you a three-line definition, three-sentence definition of Lean and three-sentence definition of Six Sigma after five or ten minutes. But before that, let us learn some basic things. See, when we want to identify the wasteful steps in our process, the best way to do is by doing a Gemba investigation. What is Gemba investigation? Gemba means going to the field, going to the place of work. Gemba is a Japanese uh, word which uh, says, uh, you know, which means going to the place of work, going to the battleground. So here uh, you want to identify the waste in the process, the steps which are not adding any value, but you have been doing unknowingly, you know, you have been doing. Uh, one example I'll give, approval process. Now you'll say approval is such an important process. Actually, it is not adding any value. Rework. You commit a mistake and then you rectify a mistake. You'll say, well, rectifying a mistake is important, isn't it? I'll not waste the material which I have created. Well, rework is a waste because why did you commit a mistake? You should not have committed the mistake. Ensure that your systems and processes are so well uh, planned and executed that do you don't commit a mistake. We call it spokayoke. Pokayoke means... Uh, even without a mistake, you know, by mistake also, you should not commit a mistake, something like that. So design a system in such a way that you don't commit a mistake and don't commit errors and don't have to rework. Transportation, moving from one place to another place unnecessarily when the customer is not willing to pay for is also a waste. So these are the uh, seven ways to recognize over producing more than required, waiting waiting for the previous step to complete the job so that I can start my job. Transportation, over-processing, doing more than what the customer is willing to pay for. Inventory, raw material inventory, work in process inventory, finished goods inventory, all are money stuck in the organization. They are all waste. Rework and rejections, I already explained. Underutilized resources, in waste of intelligence. You hire, hire a PhD person and give him data entry job. And that's happening nowadays. So that's a waste of intelligence. Company, you know, employees are capable of giving a lot of great results, a lot of good ideas. But if you don't listen to them, it's waste of their intelligence. So all these are known as seven wastes. And you try to identify these wastes by going Gemba. Gemba means go to the field, go to the workplace. And then Try to reduce the waste as much as possible, which will reduce your cycle times, which will reduce the errors and increase this customer satisfaction. You can apply various techniques like 5S, Poka UK. 5S means keeping your workplace neat and clean. If you are interested in more uh, uh, knowing more about 5S, I've created a video. You can just watch that video. I'll put it here in the chat box. 
I'll also send it to you in email. All these, uh, my team will remember. And this is very important. My team will remember to send all these videos, 5S, uh, uh, Poker UK, and so many videos. Well, they are all available on our YouTube channel, but you know, separate links also will be sent to you. So using all these techniques, you are able to reduce the cycle times, improve the customer satisfaction, and reduce the costs of your operations. And this is what is lean. Okay. So in three sentences, what is lean? Map the process as it is. Map the process as it is. By doing GEMBA investigation, means by going to the field, and identify the waste in the system. There are seven wastes, I told you. Identify the waste in the system and reduce the cycle times and errors by using tools like 5S and Poka UK. Poka UK means be, even by mistake, you cannot reduce a mistake. Yeah. Like, uh, even by mistake, you cannot forget the... Um, no, if you really want to forget... Still, if, even by mistake, you will not forget your ATM in your... Uh, uh, sorry, your uh, card in your ATM machine. Because first they return back your card, then you get the money. And you are there to get the money, isn't it? So first they return the card, so it's unlikely. Or even by mistake, someone cannot use your card uh, by using your pin or guessing your pin. So, so these are some examples of uh, poker okay mistake proofing even by mistake you will not commit a mistake some of the cars they don't start unless you are wearing a seat belt that is again an again example of a poker okay so using all these techniques if you are making your customers happy reducing the errors this is what is lean uh, what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is about reducing the variation in the process. In simple words, first I will tell you, then you will have to undergo a basic statistical training for maybe 10-15 minutes. And after that, I'll be able to tell you very properly what is your what is known as Six Sigma or what is Six Sigma or what, what is the essence of Six Sigma. Then we will do a project as I promised you. We'll do a project after we learn some basic statistics and some basic uh, uh, foundational principles of Six Sigma, then we'll start learning our DMAC and we'll start doing a project. So if I take a simple example, like, like say, for example, you know, I, I go to a car showroom, I want to buy a car and I have chosen the model, whatever model I've chosen. And there are 10 cars uh, which are there in the, showroom and uh, they, uh, they the showroom manager says you can pick up any car but the first car is having like headlights are a little bit of better quality second car the wheels are of little better quality now they are all same models what would you expect all the cars are exactly similar isn't it you can pick up any car there should not be difference between the quality of one car from next car isn't it it should be sim 10 car or 20 or 200 cars produced by this company should be of same quality, giving the same features of having almost the same tolerances. But if the company is not able to produce uh, su such product, you will never trust this company. As a simpler example, let me tell you, you go to McDonald's, you go to uh, McDonald's in New York or in Riyadh or in London or in Dubai uh, or in Melbourne. By the way, I keep giving examples of Australia because I'm a permanent resident of uh, Australia. But most of my time is spent in Europe and Middle East because there, there are my most of my clients are there. But anyway, I keep roaming around the world. That's that's the life of a Lean and Six Sigma Master Black Belt. And uh, by the way, we also conduct Master Black Belt trainings. We are one of the few companies in the world which can conduct right from yellow belt, green belt, black belt, still master black belt. And you'll be learning from the person who has real good experience, who is doing the projects. You know, it's not like I'm just teaching. We are doing the project in and out. Like during the day, I was involved in a project. Next week, I'm going to uh, one of the uh, 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 clients, which is a sugar mill. Uh, there, uh, you know, we are doing a project. After that, I'll be in Riyadh where we are doing, in, there's a warehouse, a bakery. Then we have got a 
milk producing company, very well known. Uh, everyone knows about that company. Then we have got two hospitals. It's, you see, we are doing the projects. We are guiding the projects. Sometimes we guide the projects online. Sometimes we are, are doing it in person. All these, all these things you will be learning from those who are actually applying these tools and techniques. So if you go for the Six Sigma, Six Sigma means reducing the variation. Go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, you will find same service, same kind of product, same kind of quality. There won't be any difference between the quality. So that variation, if you are able to reduce, this variation, when you are able to reduce, that is going to give a good certificate about your products. Customers will always trust the companies which do not have variation in, in their products or services. So how to reduce that variation, that also we will see. I just explained Six Sigma in very simple words. Now we'll explain statistically also. We'll understand how and what Lean Six Sigma is and how it can be implemented. But before I do that, uh, because would you like me to take some examples of uh, seven wastes? Or directly should I jump to the uh, your choice? You know, some people sometimes people say, "Well, we are all aware of seven wastes," you know, and don't have to give an example. So, if you would like me to give some examples of uh, seven wastes and from which industry, whoever says first, you know, I've got oil and gas, I've got uh, healthcare, I've got uh, uh, okay, three people said healthcare, okay, education, okay, fine, seven wastes, wastes we are talking about. Okay, uh, some people are telling oil. Okay, I'll take examples from manufacturing for Six Sigma. Okay, let me take example of, uh, so I'll have to jump a little bit because just give me one minute because you are asking for an example, although it was scheduled towards the end. So let me jump to my slides a little later on. Uh, uh, just give me one minute. Uh, give me one minute. Yeah, They're all, yeah. Coming here, I I'd put it as an appendix because if you ask for it, I'll I'll <laughs> go for it. Okay, no problems. So uh, as I was telling, uh, lean is more a uh, war on a we on a waste uh, because uh, I've I'm going to summarize everything. Uh, I will be a little quick. Yeah, uh, these were the wastes. Now, to remember the ways, sometimes people use this acronym, I swim to. Yeah. Or sometimes they call it Tim Woods or whatever. Or you can also call it as downtime. Yeah. So, waste of intelligence, waste of scrap, rework, defects in project, waiting, inventory, motion, transportation. Now, for for the waste, I let me take healthcare example. Okay, so I'll just uh, let's say CBC blood test processing time. Now any step which is not adding any value to the customer, which the customer is not willing to pay for, is a waste. If I take this example of our training right now, you are my customer, and uh, what is the value you are looking at? What is the value you are looking at right now uh, from this program? The value you are looking at is enhancement of knowledge, your skills, your knowledge, a basic understanding of what is Six Sigma. That is the value. Now, to deliver that value, if I tell you that, well, I traveled from one place to another place, uh, uh, you know, I uh, uh, took a flight, I stayed in a hotel, you're not interested in all these things, isn't it? That is not adding any value to you. What is adding value is that training program. What is adding value to is the knowledge. The knowledge transfer is what the value, what is the value you are looking for. Isn't it? Please remember this. So here in a blood test, what is the value? Here the customers are the physician, the cust uh, of course the doctor, or the, uh, the customer is the patient also. Now, what is the value they are looking at from the blood test? They are looking at uh, knowledge about uh, the state of their health, right? That That's what the uh, value is. That's what the value we are we are we are interested in delivering. Now to deliver that value, uh, what what happens? Person or patient walks to the outpatient department. 
then they register an OPD. They are not adding any value. These steps are not adding any value. What are the value added activities here? Only two, drawing the blood and processing the blood, getting the blood test or getting the report. That these are the two value added activities and you will be very surprised to uh, find only 10 or 20% of the steps will be value added. It, it's surprising, but it's true. And uh, this we have found in almost all cases. So you might be wondering, I'm doing 20 things in the whole day, but only three or four things are adding value. And that's true. Rest are non-value. I told you approval process. Approval process is not adding any value. What is the approver doing? Tell me what exactly the approver is just looking at something and there's a tick mark or signing on it. What do what exactly he's doing, which the previous step would not have done? Can you empower the previous step? You have VPs signing lots of files or like you know, just approving something on the email or an e-system. What exactly they're checking? If you ask them, they'll say, Well, my manager has checked everything and I'm just looking at it. And I'm just ensuring he's not committed a mistake. What does the manager do? Manager is also approving. My junior has done something. And I was just checking. Why? Why your junior is not capable of delivering something without error? Train him so that you don't have to check. Yeah. So approval is nothing but checking, right? Lot of places we have eliminated approval process altogether. Sometimes we have reduced the approval steps from 10 to 2. Sometimes we have eliminated. Now, I can't, uh, you know, there are a lot of good case studies with us related to that. Uh, but very quickly, 80% of the nurse calls are housekeeping in nature. It is waste of intelligence of nurse. Why? Because see, how, what is housekeeping? Patients call nurse, well, my pillow cover is dirty, my bed sheet is dirty. The nurse is there to give you the medicine. Nurse is there to give you the uh, to, to nurse you, you know, to, to, to uh, take care of you. Now, if you would give her jobs related to uh, housekeeping, uh, she may forget to give you the medicine. <laughs> so, waste of intelligence is one important thing, which is sometimes overlooked in all our organization. I'm, now, I've, I've given an example of hospital. This is true for in oil and gas industry also. A lot of steps are unnecessary. Lots of intelligence waste is there. Uh, anyway, uh, some of the other examples where we did, you know, in fact, we reduced the waste was we doubled the cardiology capacity from 8 to 16. We reduced the diagnosis to exam time from 3,000 minutes to 64 minutes. We cut admission from 17 minutes to 5 minutes and reduced the signature steps no lots of times unnecessary steps the patients were asked to fill in the form again and again some same information three people are asking in three different departments you know all, some of the things are never used some of the information is never used it was required seven years ago eight years ago see most of your processes they were designed 10 years ago 20 years ago it's just blindly following them technology has changed everyone knows that these steps are not required but they still keep on doing blindly they keep on doing the green belt and black belts become the first people to challenge this and they remove the waste from the system. Some more examples, unnecessary motion, unnecessary waiting, unnecessary transport, errors. A person who's sitting idle is a waste. Underutilized resources, it could be person or an equipment, that's a waste. On a funny note, cost of a five-minute MD walk it costs hospital $6. Uh, even walking to elevator, elevator weight, elevator travel, if you keep and keep on adding all these things, uh, it costs a lot of money uh, to the hospital. Uh, I had published this paper in one of the American journals and uh, it was very well received. And I'm not joking. This is not like something made up. These are actually real figures. And you just imagine if there are 200 nurses in a hospital, you know, I'm talking about the one hospital, multiplied by 365 days, there could be huge losses just because of just traveling, moving in the elevator. So as simple as that. Now, these times of waste in, in one warehouse I was talking about, when we studied, we did a spaghetti diagram. Spaghetti diagram is something like, you know, uh, this is, uh, let's say, warehouse. We looked at the movement of the forklifts in same thing we did in hospitals. 
We looked at the movement of the patients. You find that a lot of movement is taking from place from one place to another place. Bring those things together. And you'll be surprised. Millions of dollars are saved by some, some simple steps like these. Lab and pharmacy on second floor, radiation equipment on ground floor, again, wastes. Why don't we have them on same floor? Inter interruption uh, during the examination or uh, treatment is a waste. Uh, example of mistake proofing I was talking about. Mistake proofing is like even by mistake, the rice will never burn uh, in the cooker because it will automatically get switched off. Similarly, same things you can use in, uh, in oil and gas, safety equipments, in healthcare, smart machines. So they cannot be set or operated beyond normal, safe or maximum levels. Yeah, these are some examples. Even by mistake, you cannot put an abnormal values. So normal range is 0.001 to 0 0.01. 0 0.1 will be automatically rejected. Uh, oxygen and nitrogen cylinders cannot be exchanged. You know, by mistake, you cannot connect oxygen to nitrogen because the connectors are different. So these are all examples of uh, you know okay, okay, fixed number of packages during the surgery, complete catheter kits for insertion, Prepackaged medication card with correct dosage. All these are examples of waste. Uh, well, so I'll just go back now. Uh, uh, I, you asked for some examples, so I just gave. Let us move back. Now, I was telling. Uh, now, let us look at what is Six Sigma. Okay. And we we'll learned some basic statistics. Uh, before that, let me ask some of you are asking who is the yellow belt, green belt, black belt, and master black belt. Let me tell you that first. Yellow belts are those people who have got basic understanding, very, very basic understanding of Six Sigma. So today you will be a yellow belt. All of you will be a yellow belt. Green belts are those people who have not only the understanding, they are skilled they have also used these tools and techniques. They have practiced those tools and techniques. They have either done a project. Now, if you are joining my session in as a green belt, we do a project together in the classroom. And uh, I will do the project. You can participate in it. And these are all real projects. We, are, we have done all successful projects. Sometimes we bring the people who are actually, who have done the projects or who are actually getting the benefit from these projects. Then black belts are those people who are who learn a little bit more. You know, green belts are some uh, good statistical tools. Black belts are some advanced statistical tools. Uh, typically, green belt is a three days training program, three to four days, full days. Or generally, I conduct it on Fridays and Saturdays or Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, otherwise, we also have another batch in the morning, two hours in the morning. Or we can have a one we have a batch in the evenings, again two two hours. So you can join any of these courses, green belts and black belts, and uh, you can master these tools and techniques. Uh, master black belts are those people who can conduct the training programs, who can also do the projects, who can guide the projects. So here, uh, here in this case, we have got lots of uh, uh, green belts, black belts around the world, uh, where we have. Uh, Done, uh, done these uh, trainings uh, in different languages too. Yes, of course. Uh, if you are interested in, in Hindi, it is available on YouTube. It's a recorded version. It's available. If you are interested, you can watch. Arabic also is there. And uh, we have Arabic trainers as well. Although I, I'll not be conducting the Arabic session, but we have Arabic trainers as well. And uh, uh, many times I have conducted trainings in uh, Oman, Middle East, uh, uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, uh, where people have translated, or whatever I have said, they have translated into Arabic. Too. Well, so now let us learn about, let us do some, uh, you know, start learning about some, some of the basic statistics. Let us start learning DMAC, Define, Measure, Analyze, and Prune Control. And DMAC, uh, we'll be learning CYPOC, we'll be learning Project Charter, in defined phase. Defined phase, we define the problem. What what is the problem? What what problem we are facing? What company or or what company is facing? Like production is low, your productivity is low. 
or production per ton uh, uh, tons per day is low or your sales are low whatever you state the problem problem statement and a goal state so if sales are low your sales are fifty thousand dollars you'd like to increase to sixty thousand dollars per day or per week your production is low 100 tons per day you would like to increase 100 tons per day to 150 tons per day yeah so these are some examples of like projects so in the defined phase we just define a problem statement goal statement and we form a team in the measure phase we collect the data we don't trust anyone except the data deming used to say in god we trust rest others bring data means i'm not going to trust you unless you show me the data so i'm going to trust you if you show me the data so reliance is on the data also one of the uh, very popular saving of uh, uh, deming is deming was a quality guru um 85% of the problems are due to the processes not due to the people only 15% is contributed by the people 85% is contributed by the processes. So all the tools and techniques which we learn in Lean and Six Sigma, they are all process related. Why I'm saying so? Because see, if you have a very good person but a process is broken, a very bad system, even if he tries, he cannot achieve any good results. And the person who's average, okay, the same person, if he's shifted to a better system, he will deliver the good results. The same team will produce excellent results if you give them new processes. And the senior management, the leadership has got the responsibility of giving those resources, giving those processes. Making the changes happen is the senior management's responsibility. So the focus has to be on the process and the system and not on the people. Okay, so that is why we are, all the tools and techniques are related to processing. So well, in the measure phase, we collect the data. In the analyze phase, we'll find the root causes. Why this problem exists. Improve phase, we'll find solutions to the root causes. We'll not find solutions. We're not going to shoot in the dark. Typically, what happens when we have a problem, we come out with a solution without doing the root cause analysis. Maybe that was not the root cause. Maybe... Something else is the root cause. You're unnecessarily trying to improve something which is not causing the problem. So don't jump to the solution. In the improve phase, you find the root cause. You, you only find the solution to the root causes, the causes. In the control phase, you sustain the whatever improvement you have achieved. You, you're going to sustain for a long, long time. Let me give a simple day-to-day -day life example before I give you the recruitment cycle time example. We'll do a project as I promised you. And uh, we have got still now one hour remaining. One hour we'll do the project. But before that, and we'll also learn some lots of uh, statistical techniques, statistical analysis, st statistical fundamentals. But uh, a simple, sometimes, you know, simple day to day life examples are easier to understand the things. Let us say, and in fact, I did this project uh, around three, three years ago. Let us say I want to improve my, uh, uh, let's say I want to improve my health. Yeah, I wanted to improve my health. Now, one thing you have to believe is you cannot improve if you cannot measure. You cannot improve if you cannot measure. Right. So how can I measure my health? There are various measures. It could be weight. It could be uh, so many ways uh, uh, blood pressure uh, uh, lot of people from healthcare are there they know it better. a lot of measures are there I will choose one of the measures okay. we call them as CTQs critical to quality critical to quality measure means my health can be measured in terms of weight, my blood pressure my glucose levels etc etc and one of the CTQs we generally choose to improve right and I convert it to a project. So weight is one of the things. Define phase, I write my problem that my weight was 90 kg. And the goal statement is I want to reduce it to 80 kg. Right? Then we start 
collecting the data. In the measure phase, we start collecting the 90, 91, 89, 89.5, 90.5, 90.8, 90, 90, 89.8, etc. Average is, average time, average weight is 90. And then we create a histogram. Histogram is most of the time I see my weight is 90, but sometimes it goes to 90.5, 90.8, but more or less it is between 89 to 91. Okay. So this is the measure phase. We also call this as control limits. Control limits means my, my, my weight today is between 89 to 91. So I can just write like for the time being, I can say 89 to 91. My weight is like this. Yeah. Now I started analyzing why my weight is around 90. I'm not worrying about the variation between 89 to 91. I'm not feeling happy at 89 and feeling sad at 91. No. No. I'm, I'm looking at the systems, 89 to 90 is my state, current state. And I would like to reduce it to somewhere around 80. Why my weight is high? Why? What are the reasons? So there is a tool called cause and effect diagram, also known as fishbone diagram. Okay. Fishbone diagram, cause and effect diagram or a fishbone diagram. Now this cause and effect diagram will list down all the possible causes. All the possible causes. And here I list down there are so many causes like the diet, the portion of the food I eat, how much I eat, sleep, uh, my exercises, etc. Lots of X. We call them as X factors. And whatever I'm trying to improve, we call it as Y. Y and X. Now we start correlating. So see, a lot of people in generally what will happen usually. What will happen usually? If you if I tell, well, my weight is uh, too much, people will say, eat less. They'll start giving solutions or oh, go for exercise. Without looking for the root cause, my root cause could be different from yours. Maybe exercises work for you. It may not work for me. I'm already exercising. By the way, I'm a, I'm a person who every day, definitely for one hour, definitely exercise. I was exercising. So I have to find my own root causes. Every project is a different, you know, you have to get your root cause. So for me, I'll not go into the details, but for me, see, uh, there is one gentleman called Mr. Uh, like Wilfredo Pareto in 17th and 18th century, he found that 80% of the wealth in Italy was with 20% of the people. And he called this as 80-20 rule. So Joseph Giran applied this to quality and he said 80% of your problems, whatever problems you are trying to solve are coming from the 20% of the causes. So if you listed down so many causes, I listed down diet, portion of the diet, exercises, sleep, etc., uh, lifestyle, travels, these are all causes. Only 20% of these causes, if I've listed down 10, only two of them are responsible for my high weight. So for me, it was sleep, lack of sleep, not enough sleep. And for me, I was eating good food, diet, very nice food, no oil, no sugar, etc. But the portion of good food also affected, you know. If you eat too much of good food, that is also <laughs> it's going to increase your weight. So I, I took an action there. I started increasing my sleep timings. I, I used different techniques. So I got the solutions. But I solved my problem related to my root causes. That was the difference Lean Six Sigma brought in. And once I solved it, I was able to bring down my weight to 80. 81 to 79 to 81. And I was able to sustain it, improve. See, control is also important. I'm able to sustain for the last three years. I'm able to sustain it. My next project, 
always in New Year resolutions. <laughs> My next project is to bring it down to 70. So uh, it, it, it's in the next six months. So June 30th is my uh, deadline. And hopefully, now because this is being recorded, it will be, it is actually live on YouTube. It's already recorded. You know, when you see this, please remember, <laughs> it's already available. Uh, most likely, uh, I will reduce it by 70. Uh, because I, I'm already, now my root causes are different. Today, my root causes are of, now I'm not able to reduce further. The root causes are totally different. So I have to find my root causes. I can't give you solutions today. I will follow DMAC. And that's how we do. Now let us solve a real problem. This company wants to reduce the recruitment cycle time. What is the measure? Recruitment cycle time. So first you look at the process. Problems are in the process. Right? Problems are in the process. We will follow DMAC. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Multiple times I have... Uh, told you about DMAC, DMAC, define, measure, analyze, and perfect control, so that it should, uh, you should always remember that. So here, if you are looking at doing a project, DMAC is the way to go. Most of the companies in the world, they are doing DMAC. And when they do DMAC, we say they are implementing Six Sigma. So first you do a sign park and then make a project chart. So let me tell you what are they. First you form a team. A team, a project is always done in a team. And uh, when you form a team, usually you also seek the blessings of the senior management. So you identify two roles in your project. One is the process owner. Owner means the manager of the process and whose process you are doing the project. He's the process owner. And the champion, the sponsor or the champion is the head of the department in whose process you are doing the project. Now you have to engage them. You know? Otherwise you can't do any improvements without their engagement. So you are designating them. You know, you are the champion, sir. Director, HR director, you are the champion. Well, I will support you. That's what he will say. Process owner, recruitment manager, well, you know, recruitment manager knows the process. You need his support as well. He will give you the data. He or she will be giving you the data. And then you become a green belt or black belt or you find a master black belt person who has got good experience and who will, can, who will be able to guide you. So this was a real project, actually. Yeah. If you start with the process, of, see, you look at the process. Which process I'm talking about here? Here, I'm talking about recruitment process. Problems are in the process. Okay? Recruitment process, you identify the customers. First, you identify the customers. Who are my customers? Okay. The departments for whom we are recruiting, they are the customers. What is the output? See, when you are doing a CIPOC, supplier input, process output customer, you are trying to have a systems thinking. Now don't focus only on the problem. First, have a systems approach. First, have a bigger picture. CIPOC is giving you the bigger picture. It's a 50,000 feet view of the process. So you have customers. What is the output? When you are doing a CIPOC, you try from right to left. It's easier. When you are reading, you can read from left to right because the process generally starts from suppliers, inputs, and process output and customers, but when you are making a cipher for your process, try to do from customers output. It's easier. Yeah. So I started with customers. I identified the customers uh, output is of, of course, the recruited employee. And what are the basic steps? We write the basic steps. Now, I'm not going to go into the real process details here. Mm, you can fit in your process also there. If you want to say, improve your production. So you will put production process there. If you want to reduce your infection rate during the treatment, so treatment process would be put in there. Yeah. Inputs. Inputs are, you know, I hear IT system, job description, CVs. What is required for the process to be performed? So these are process steps which will deliver the output, 
which is the recruited employee. What are the requirements so that I can process them? What are the inputs which need to be processed? Your IT system, your job description, your CVs, budget, all these things are required, isn't it? Then who, who are supplying these inputs? The departments themselves are supplying what? The job description. Yeah. The requirement. See, the departments are raising the requirement, isn't it? So that's an input to my process. And the suppliers of these requirements are the departments themselves. So sometimes the customers also can be the suppliers. Please remember, don't have a mindset like suppliers might mean something which is who's supplying the raw material. Of course, that is also a supplier. But here we are talking about process improvement. We are looking at the process. We are looking at the inputs of the process. The inputs could be coming from within your company also. So both, it can come from within the company or outside. The company. So, so we, I've understood how the system is operating, right? And measure on that output. We call it a CTQ, critical to quality characteristics. We call it as a measures. Typically, you will always see three measures will, may, will always be there for any process. Think of your output. Think of your process. You are producing something, isn't it? Either you are producing a product or a service. Three things are always important. One is time, cycle time. Another is number of errors or mistakes or defects, whatever you call. And the third is cost. Apart from that, there could be many measures. Like I said, infection rate. If you are producing chocolates, the sugar content in the chocolate or the dimensions of the chocolate, you know, length, width, measure all weight of the chocolate. These are these are all, you know, measures on the output. We have a name for them, which is critical to quality characteristics, CTQ. And we go to the customers here, the department, and we ask, what, what, do, you, what, what do you want in the output? They will tell you lots of things and we put a measure because you cannot improve if you cannot measure. You have to put a measure. You can measure everything. In fact, I'll tell you how in a short while. If time permits, maybe, yeah. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll tell you that as well. So, output, process, input, customers. Now, I know if there is a delay, one of the measures is time, cycle time. Anything wrong or here, delay, could be due to delay in receiving and shortening the resume. It could be due to a delay in interviewing the shortlisted candidates. It could be due to delay in negotiation, delay in developing the mobilization plan, delay in IT system is down, job description is not available, CVs are not uh, good, uh, budget is not approved, HR staff are unskilled. So many things, so many X factors. Put a measure. Put a measure on inputs and process. Measures on inputs and process they are called as X factors. Measures on inputs and process are known as X factors. And what is the output? Output is the measure. Y. We call it them Y. And we write an equation. So Y is function of X. Y is function of X. Okay. I have given this. Uh, we also train you in interview questions, by the way. We are discussing about the Lean and Six Sigma interview questions. Let me talk about Cypoc. Cypoc is a tool derived from Deming's systems approach. He used to say that 85% of the problems are due to the processes and only 15% are contributed by the people. It is a tool that gives you 50,000 feet overview of the process. If you give me only one page to give maximum information about the process, then I would use a Cypoc. So if you are asked about the Cypoc, then you can say that it is a tool that is used to see the overall process in one instant. It gives the whole picture of suppliers, inputs, process, output and customers. And the Cypoc, the acronym stands for that. It makes us follow the systems approach of Deming. It is usually done in the defined phase immediately after you have written the project charter. Once we know the project, then we make a cyborg on the process in which you are doing the project. This helps us to focus on the process rather than blaming the people for all the defects, errors and delays. To make a cyborg, 
we move from right to left. That means we start by identifying the customers, then the output, then process steps and the inputs and the suppliers. Cypoc helps us to identify the inputs or the X factors which are influencing our output that is the Y. Because Y is function of X, Cypoc is the starting point of using the statistical methods. After that, you can give an example of a Cypoc of a process from the organization for which you are appearing for an interview. So anyway, the, the we not this was just one example of interview question. We have got multiple interview questions. They're all again available on our YouTube channel. So when you join our Green Builder or Black Belt training program, we also train you how to defend your certificate. Most of the time, see, no one actually uh, sees your certificate to be very precise. Of course, it is required. Uh, I'm not saying it's not, but more important, there are uh, you know certificates nowadays you can get very uh, you know easily nowadays uh, more importantly that knowledge you should be having knowledge when you when you claim that you are a black belt you, you are a green belt you should be able to defend you should be able to answer the questions correctly and that is where the real thing is and uh, when you are seeking a better uh, career or better role or better jobs obviously being a green belt and black belt is a very big advantage you can be a chartered accountant. You can, uh, as a black belt, you can solve problems related to your accounting businesses. You can be a doctor. You can, you will be a better doctor if you know the data analytics part or problem solving. You can be a better nurse. You can be a better engineer. You can be a better production manager. You could be a better banker. If you are a black belt or a green belt, you don't have to become a full time consultant like me. Of course, most welcome if you want to become. Why not? But uh, you know, you 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 don't have to really. Uh, it it it's, it becomes a, actually assisting. It assists you to do your job better, right? So the whole idea is uh, uh, to do. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Mark. Thanks for that. <laughs> the, you, you're just giving some compliments. Thanks, thanks a lot for that. Yeah. So now, uh, what? Uh, when, when we talk about data, you know, people have different responses. You know, I have too much of data. I don't know what to do with it. Or we do not collect the data. Uh, Abdul Khadr, thanks a lot. Uh, and analysis is too complicated. Now, I told you, you cannot improve if you cannot measure. Now, do you agree with that? That everything can be measured? Do you agree? If, if you don't agree, then in that case, some people are telling agree, some people are telling not agree. Let me tell you the three rules. You can't improve if you cannot measure. Second rule is, you can measure everything. And the third rule is, if you think something cannot be measured, go back to rule number two. That means you can measure everything. Okay. So there are two types of data. Continuous data and attributed data. Let me give you a trick how to measure everything. Okay, Amit Tyagi is telling, I have done CPHQ training with NXS and you are awesome. Thanks, thanks a lot, Amit. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, we also conduct CPHQ training, certified professional and healthcare quality training. We also conduct quality managers training. We See, anything related to quality, we are there. <laughs> thanks a lot, Amit, for, for your kind words. So let me explain what is what is continuous and attribute data. Although we have got videos also, we give you these videos, uh, professionally made videos to, to you know retain those things. After the classroom, you know, you'd like to go back and revise. Uh, but for the time being, uh, I'll be, okay, let me show you uh, uh, videos also, uh, glimpses of video I'll, also I'll show you. But uh, let us first, let me explain. Ta uh, continuous data is anything which is on the number line which can be represented on a number line between minus infinity to plus infinity. Any number, 55.5 days, it can take a decimal point also. It's a continuous data. It is on a continuous, it can be represented on a continuous line. That is why it is known as continuous data. Now, attribute data, you know, it's like categorical. You know, good, bad, 
Yeah. Okay, Chandan Singh is telling that uh, he's also looking for CPHQ training. Please guide me. Okay, no problems. Uh, my team uh, will be able to guide you. And uh, I also do CPHQ foundation training free of cost. Uh, you can join some of those. Just uh, uh, join our LinkedIn, Annexus Europe. Uh, just uh, uh, click on, uh, I think, joining link or just go to Annexus Europe, search for Annexus Europe in LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram. And we keep posting our dates. So whenever you have the next date, you can join. Uh, you can also see the recording of our CPHQ session, by the way, if you need. And uh, uh, yeah, so thanks. Thanks a lot and that, uh, for asking that question. I had forgotten to uh, talk about our other programs. PMP, Project Management Training. We are approved by PMI as well. Those who are looking for that, we also... I mean, I do that. I see. I'm a very passionate uh, uh, person, uh, like trainer. You know, <laughs> well, all trainers say I'm very passionate, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm passionate at this age also. <laughs> Otherwise, youngsters might be passionate, but they lose the passion. You know, once they become old like me, they lose the passion. But uh, I have not lost the passion, and uh, I have got a lot of it. I, I'm just trying to sell myself a little bit so when you join an excess you just please uh, when you're registering if you're registering today uh, i'll be your trainer <laughs> so uh, do do that do the registration towards the end or if you want to do it early my team will be happy to put the registration details here and they will uh, you know you can join join my training programs anyway so let, let's go back let's let's look at the attribute attribute data is a categorical data see categorical data can be counted you can have 50 females 20 males you cannot have 20.1 male right so in a way if i want to express this in uh, uh, let's say hi yeah Uh, the third rule can be, uh, if you think something cannot be measured, the age is 52.5 years, uh, that's my age, uh, height uh, maybe 180.1 centimeters, uh, cycle time of a process 3.5 hours, or procurement time in an organization uh, 120.3 days. Hi, I'm Amitabh Saxena and... Uh... Yes, yeah, so if you see here... Uh... Uh, as I was telling, these were all examples of uh, continuous data, right? These were all continuous data examples. And categorical data would be something which... Say, for example, if you want to cycle time of a process 3.5 hours. So these, these were all, you know, con continuous data because there is a possibility, if you see, there is a possibility of a decimal place. And that's also a unit. Always it will have a unit. But the attribute data, you will not find a unit. It's a count. And you, you will not find a possibility of a decimal place. So let me show you the example here. Hours or procurement time in an organization, uh, 120.3 days. The, these are all continuous data because they all have a possibility of a decimal means they can be expressed in decimal points and also they all have a unit. Now let us talk about attribute data. Attribute data can be expressed in categories and categories can be counted. Say for example, if you want to uh, measure happiness, so easiest way to measure any attribute uh, data is to create a category and if possible you can create a binary category. A So here, see, sometimes people say, well, how can I measure happiness? Uh, there are so many things. People say, I cannot measure love. I cannot measure hatred. No, I cannot measure so many things. So the easiest way to measure anything is create categories. And always two categories can always be created for any, any, anything, any attribute. They are known as... Uh, Hi. So... They are known as uh, you know, presence or absence of that particular category. 
you know, I'm, I'm giving you hints and I'm just telling you some easy techniques. Uh, of course, uh, the experts will tell you, experts of that particular field. I can't have 60.1. would be employee. happiness experts also, right? <laughs> they will tell you some other ways. But the easiest way, you know, if, you, if I don't have anything in mind, I can just put two categories, happy and unhappy. Yeah. Love, how can I measure love? Love, no love. Yeah. Love or hatred anyway. Something like that. It makes our job easy. So if I take uh, the example of happiness, Two categories I can create, happy, unhappy. So if I want to increase the happiness uh, in the employees, uh, uh, in the organization, then I can always count uh, how many employees are happy. Let's say uh, 60 employees are happy and 40 employees are unhappy. I can express this as proportion. That means proportion of happy employees in the organization is 0.6 and proportion of uh, unhappy employees is uh, 0.4. And uh, it can also be expressed as percentage. Now, this. Now, let us uh, have a look at it. You see that count as 60, 60.1, 60 it is not possible. Now, proportion when I am expressing, there is a that has to be a decimal always. Proportion means portion out of one. Portion out of one. This is one. If the circle is one. 0.6 belongs to uh, happy and 0.4 belongs to unhappy. Yeah. So it is known as 60. Sometimes people also like 60%, 40%. They like to express in percent. Cent means if the circle was 100, then this will be 60 and this will be 40. Yeah. Now, this is how we'll treat our attribute data. So you now you know how you can measure everything. You can measure customer satisfaction also, as satisfaction, dissatisfied, dissatisfied, or you can have five categories. Customer satisfaction, I can have five categories: very, very happy, then happy, then a little bit happy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll not go into the details. So this is how we'll measure now. Uh, when we are talking about improvements, the first stage is measure. But later on, when we go to the analyze phase, again, the type of data will come into picture and the tool which I'm going to use also depends on the type of data. So if I'm using, let's say, if I'm talking about attribute data, like happy and happy, I'm using pie chart, bar chart, happy, unhappy. But when I'm using, let's say, weight, height, or uh, recruitment cycle time, I can make a histogram. Histogram means historical graph of the data collected in the last 30 days or whatever, like it could be one year, two years. In a certain duration, I've collected the data. I'm trying to express this as one graph that is known as histogram. So let us, I, I'll talk more about it in a short while, but any questions you have related to and any questions you have related to this i hope you have understood this continuous and attribute data okay great so we can produce proceed oh, yeah so now i'll write the project chart i'll write the project chart uday kiran vade Okay. So, um, thank you. Thanks for that. So, project charter. Project charter I create. Today, I am taking 50 days and I would like to reduce it 30 days by July. It has to be a smart goal statement, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And in the problem statement, you should not write the cause. Don't write the solution also. Otherwise, people say, it takes too much time because we, because of lack of staff. You know, that is wrong. How do, you, how do you know that lack of staff is the problem? If I give you 100 people, will it re reduce to 30, cage, 30 days? Will you be able to recruit a person in uh, less than 50 days? You don't know. So don't jump to the solution. Don't jump to the conclusion. Don't, don't assign a cause. Just write the problem. That's it. The way I wrote in my weight example, I am 90 kg. Why? I don't know. Yeah, same, same thing. 
And if I do this project, it's going to help me reduce my cost or get, my, get some additional money, revenue, whatever. Every project saves some money for the organization. Write that because that will motivate the team also. That will motivate the senior management to support you also. So I'm not going to other aspects of the project charter because we are in the yellow belt. So we move to the measure phase. We start understanding the symptoms are the why. Why are the outputs, the symptoms? But the real causes are somewhere else. When you go to the doctor, so say when I go to the doctor, I'm having, so let's say, fever. Doctor also always data-oriented person, right? The symptom is the fever. He will measure. He say, I cannot improve if I cannot measure, right? So he's measuring my body temperature. And he says, you are, well, you are having 101 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.5 degrees Celsius. You're but he will not try to attack my symptom. You know, he will not focus on the symptom. Actually, he will he'll, uh, collect some data uh, and find, find some root causes. He will say, well, the fever could be due to many X factors. Why is the fever? Yeah. And then he finds the root cause. He does some data analysis, data collection, blood test, x-ray, etc. And then after that, he will say, well, the root cause is this. And then he will give the medicine for that. Green belt and black belts, they are also doctors of the processes. Process owners come to them saying, well, my process has got delays. Customer is dissatisfied. These are all symptoms that something is wrong in my process. Uh, there are errors. These are all symptoms that something is wrong. Don't worry about the error. Don't worry about the result. There are causes. There are causes. What are the causes? Yeah. What are the causes? Yeah, he uh, is asking, do you have any training in patient experience? Yes. In fact, uh, 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 Lena Sikrima will cater to your needs and specific to patient experience, yes. Uh, 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 we, we can talk separately about it, yes. But KPIs and uh, other things we can definitely help you there directly or indirectly. Yeah. Yeah, so why, why is the symptoms? X is the cause. As a doctor, as a green belt, you have to search for that X factor. How will you get it? You can use a cause and effect diagram. Why I'm focusing on the causes? Because this is the cause, this is the symptom. So when I collect the data, all the processes, Mr. Um, okay, let me talk about this gentleman called Goss. He found one strange phenomena. What is the strange phenomenon? Very interesting phenomenon. All the repetitive processes, they follow normal distribution. You know, all the repetitive process. Let's say uh, you are say, producing chocolates and you are weighing, you want to produce a chocolate uh, which is 100 plus minus, let's say, uh, uh, 5 kgs. So we call this a specification limit. Upper specification limit is 105 kg. And lower specification limit is 95 kg. I hope you are with me up to here. Yep. So this is the customer's, I don't know, we, we can call it as voice of customer. Customer is telling, give me a chocolate between 100 plus minus 5. Now this, I'm just giving a chocolate example. You can think of here production. You can think of uh, time taken to complete an activity, time taken to complete a surgery, perform a surgery in the hospital, uh, waiting time. It could be anything. See, everything is a measure of an output, right? So uh, we are just trying to teach you the tools. You can apply this to any domain. This is 95 and this is 105. Now, 
there is something called as voice of process, like voice of the chocolate producing process. You know, <laughs> it is also telling you. It doesn't listen to you always. It will tell you. You know, there could be various possibilities. Uh, one possibility could be, uh, well, uh, chocolate is produced like this. In this case, we are going out of the specifications. Most of the chocolates are at 100. But they are going up to 108. And they are going up to, let's say, uh, 109, let's say, 109. And they are going up to, let's say, 93. 91, let's say, 91. 91 kg, uh, gram. Not kg, sorry. Uh, let, let's, let's say grams, because if I want... It could be a big uh, uh, drums of chocolates, or here it could be a raw, or it could be a packet of chocolate. Let's let's take grams. Let's say grams. That will be more uh, related to most of you because some of you may not identify. In the chocolates, generally they are produced in large packets. Also, then they are sent to the. Uh, other factories where they produce those chocolates, right? Now, your process may be like this or your process may be like this. Now, this process doesn't produce any defects. Customers are happy. The earlier process, there were defects. Now, let us look at uh, what Gauss said. Gauss said that most of the processes, they follow this distribution. This is known as probability distribution. Most of the, you know, all the like weight of the people, the salaries of the people who are attending this training program right now, uh, the uh, time taken to uh, you know, you, you every day you travel to your office. Time taken to travel to office every day. Everything is normally distributed. What is normally, why it is known as normal distribution? Because normally you will obtain a normal distribution. So most of the time, let us say, so if I take the example of a chocolate, most of the time you are producing 100, but you are going up to 109 and you are going up to, let's say, 91 kg. Another chocolate could be between 100 and, uh, say, 97 to 103. Yeah. It depends. It depends on the voice of process. Some process will produce your machines. See, how do you get these 91 and 109? This is voice of your process. Your process is telling, well, I will, I'm capable of producing 91 to 109. You may like it to be within... Uh, uh, 95 to 105. Yeah, that's what you want. But in my case, I'm producing between the earlier case, I just drew that process, right? I'm producing between 91 to 109. And customer wanted between 95 to 95 to 105. So this we call it as defects or errors. This we call it as errors. I can say around 10% of the chocolates are rejected. Either they are more or less than the tolerance. We also call it as tolerance. 95 to 105 is specification limit or tolerance of the customers. I hope uh, I'm not being too technical anyway. These are facts of life. I'm just describing the facts of life, right? One more interesting phenomena. If you have, are, are you up to here with me? Uh, in yellow belt, typically we don't go into too much of statistics, uh, but uh, I, I wanted to give you the taste of statistics, right? So I hope uh, it's fine. You know. Now, Mr. Goss. In 17th and 18th century, he found this interesting phenomena, which I was talking about. To further elaborate, he said that every data, 
will have an average and every data will have a standard deviation. Now, what is standard deviation and how to derive it and what is the formula for that? I have even derived the formula in a video. Uh, it just I'll put that link. If you are interested, you can watch that video. But for the time being, as a yellow belt, you don't have to go into that detail. But some people like to go into the details. You can always watch that video. I have even derived the formula of a standard deviation. And I have also used it and I'll give it some examples. But please understand for the timing as yellow belt, every data set will have an average. Let's say, let's say you try time taken to travel to your office. Or let's say if I go with the chocolate example, one chocolate is 101, another chocolate is 100, another chocolate is 99, 99.5 kg, uh, sorry, k, not kg, kg grams, uh, 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 92, uh, sorry, 90, let's say, let's make a good process, 98, 102. So it will have an average. It will have an average. Yeah. Let's say it is 100. And it will have a standard deviation. And let us say it is, let's say, 3. Let us say it is 3. Now, Mr. Goss, he found that too in 17th century, without any laptop and without any calculators, look at his hard work, you know. He found that every time, every process, all the repetitive in the process in the world, if you just collect 30, 40 samples, 30 to 40 samples, that's it. You can predict about the whole population from where this sample is drawn. So suppose I want to uh, no, no average waiting time or the total waiting time of my patients in my hospital. Just collect 30, 30 patients and then take an average, take a standard deviation. Nowadays, it's very easy and I'll, I'll show you. You know, I, I've got some demonstration purpose. I will, you know, show you how it, easy it is. Uh, when you become a green belt or a black belt or join my sessions, I will train you in this these tools, uh, mini tab. We give you the mini tab totally. It's included in the package. Examination, yes, examination is included, certification is included, and 100% guarantee that you will get the certificate. We'll train you so well, and you can attempt any number of times the exam. Yeah. Uh, 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 the AEC certification you can attempt and uh, you can attempt any any bo uh, certification body you, you can but AEC certification definitely uh, we have got multiple attempts and there is no expiry date of the certificate that's the advantage yeah so recruitment so this was a recruitment cycle basic so you just click you just ask can you please make a histogram it will it will produce the histogram for you it will tell you average is uh, 50 and standard deviation is 5. Yeah, so, so as easy as this. Okay, so now coming back. What Mr. Goss found that always within plus minus 3 times the standard deviation, you will get 99.73% of the total population. Total population. I'm talking about the population, not the sample. The population. From where it is coming. So here on my chocolates, I'm producing thousands and millions of chocolates. Just collected 30 samples. Average is 100 and standard deviation is 3. So I can predict my chocolates are between 100. One time standard deviation will be 103. Two times standard deviation. 3 is the standard deviation, right? So this will be 106, right? And then this will be 109. This will be 97. This will be 94. And this will be 91. Now, this is how my process is today. I collected 30 samples and I can predict about my all chocolates. My chocolates are between 91 grams to 109 grams. Well, customer is not happy. I'm not happy, right? But suppose there's another process like this. 
your well managed process variation is very low average is 100 standard deviation is 1 gram so this is 100 the process will be something like this one standard deviation will be 101 another two standard deviation will be 102 three standard deviation will be 103 Minus one standard deviation will be 99. This will be 98 and this will be 97. In the earlier case, it was standard deviation was how much? Three. It was going from here to here. Remember that. 103, 106 and 109. Isn't it? One standard deviation was this, two standard deviation was this, three standard deviation was this. Remember because the standard deviation was three. See, plus minus three standard deviation is always there. Plus minus three standard deviation is always there. Standard deviation can keep on changing. Standard deviation depends on how well we are managing our process. Yeah. So the red process is producing the effects because the standard deviation is high. Machines are not processed properly, maintained properly. Operators are not skilled enough. The policies, procedures are having some issues. The process will behave like that. And if your operators are very skilled, machines are maintained, SOP, standard operating procedures are followed, your variation will be less. There won't be much variation. Everyone is doing the job in the same way. Standard deviation is one. So when your standard deviation is less, the variation is less, you are less likely to go out of the specification limit. Are you getting the essence of it? Are you understanding? By the way, these trainings are recorded. You can watch them any number of times. But first of all, I just wanted to know. I'm talking about some little bit so-called difficult concepts. You know, people say it's complicated concepts. Are you understanding the basic like essence of it? Uh, calculations part, etc. You don't have to really, uh, as a yellow belt, you don't have to really worry about it. Yeah, but understanding or just let me know if you want some explanation i will be happy to explain also you know how how you are getting plus minus 3 times standard deviation see plus minus 3 times always you will get right standard deviation can keep on changing yeah. so now my whole process like if i reduce the variation that's what i was telling in the beginning Six Sigma is about reducing the variation so that you don't produce defects. Defect production. See, here in this blue process, probability of producing defects is very, very low. You know, probability. Here, earlier in the red process, there are so many defects, 20% defects. Here, it's like very, very low. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. Like Three defects in one million. Very less. You know, this process, this chocolate, Company will never produce any defect. This blue chocolate company I'm talking about. And this other one, the red one, will always produce defects. Right? Yeah. Great. Now, problem. Now, we have to solve the problem, isn't it? We have to actually. So, why we are like that? So, we can do data door or process door. Data door. You can use process. Process door means you map the process in detail. Identify the waste in the system. And try to eliminate the waste as much as possible. Yeah. Rede redesign the process so that it has, uh, you know, uh, you can use escape technique. Escape is like ask five questions on each step. Can I eliminate it? Can I simplify it? Can I combine it with other steps? Can I automate it or can I make it in parallel? Escape technique in detail is given in a link. I will. Mm, um, uh, Naveen will be putting a link here uh, and uh, he will uh, you can watch that link about escape and I have given an example also there but for the time being uh, escape means you know, eliminate, simplify combine, automate parallel escape technique. You will transform your process in just two hours if you do an escape analysis on your process. So try that. Next week when you are joining your organization, try this. 
get hold of all the steps, do this. Another could be cause and effect diagram. List down all the possible causes. Get the people who are who understand the process. Tell them, think of all the possible causes, whatever comes to your mind. Think about them. They will list down all the causes. You can use a technique called 6M. Man, machine, material, method, measurement, and mother nature. Six, six uh, areas. Man, machine, material, method, measurement. Think of what could be a measure-related effect problem. What could be a method-related issue? What could be the man? Man means people. Think they, they have done all this brainstorming, put all the things, whatever comes to your mind, just put it there. And then they have... Now, you can't work on all these causes. Then you do a Pareto analysis. Pareto analysis. Will Pareto Pareto 80-20 rule? So what you do, you can take a vote or you can actually collect the data, real data, and find what are the top top votes, number of votes. Arrange them in the descending order. Descending order. Highest on the top. You will find that, you know, top 4, 5, around 20% will always have they will be the, the real culprits, you know, the root causes. Uh, we can make a Pareto chart also. Uh, you know, these are, these are so easy to easily can be made in your uh, mini tab again. So if you have the data, cause and effect diagram can also be used very easily. See, I have man related causes, uh, machine related causes, material related causes. I have listed down. The team has listed down. I can tell mini tab, please, can you make a cause and effect diagram for me and just few clicks it will make a cause and effect diagram. now now the thing life is easier right don't have to worry yeah and then reasons you list down the reasons why this delay is there approval times issue jd not available job description not available so many things some of the causes will appear again and again multiple times so the pareto chart will count them which cause is appearing more and it can create a pareto chart for you it will list down all in the descending order assessment time is the maximum biggest issue it appeared 13 times in my data Job description not available appeared nine times. Approval time appeared six times and so on and so forth. And then percentage contribution of each cause is also given. Like 34% is contributed by the assessment time. So if you see, calculate the top three, four percentage wise, the cumulative percentage, it is coming to 84%. 84% of the time, you know, you are getting these four causes out of these 10, 20 causes. So just focus on the four causes and you'll solve the problem. You can further validate them also using box plots and uh, scatter plots and regression analysis, which obviously is beyond the scope of our yellow belt training session. But you can create equation. You can create prediction equations. And we can validate them. Uh, and if time permits, maybe if you are willing to stay for a little longer later on, I will talk. But let me first uh, you know, complete formally this DMAC project. So now we have got the root causes. We understood. Then we will. And by the way, some people are asking about, yeah, you can join my training session. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the improvements. But some people are asking about, yeah, recording are available for lifetime. Projects, there is no expiry, uh, exp, uh, expiry date. You can attend my training session any number of time, any in the future. If you are once you become our student, any number of time you can attend the session. Revision, two years, five years also. I have been doing trainings for the last 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, And as a company, this company exists for the last 17 years. So uh, both of us are there to train you again if you want, anytime. Uh, project as guidance is provided. Anytime after two years you want to do a project, we'll be happy to provide that. We'll allocate some master black belt to you. 
Okay, so anyway, uh, you uh, then brainstorm. Brainstorm, there are certain rules you follow, like no idea is a bad idea, uh, capturing all ideas, etc. Uh, I've got some good uh, videos, uh, which uh, I will put, uh, you know, uh, here. Then you generate the ideas. And for each, each root cause, you are generating the idea. You are implementing those ideas. I I'll do a fast forward here uh, because uh, almost we are on the verge of uh, completion. Uh, but as I said, our focus today was on define, measure, and analyze. But I'll just show you very quickly. Once you implement, once you implement your solutions, you have to put a control system in place. You know, you have to put a system in place so that you are able to sustain the gain for a long time, like check sheets, checklists, audits, reviews. And once you have done that, they were able to reduce the time drastically. You know, they were able to reduce it drastically. And uh, just to compare before and after, what was the position before and what was the position after? You can say. So earlier, your plus minus three is uh, these are your LC lower control limit and upper control limit means that these are your plus minus three sigma limits, standard deviation limits. So earlier you were between uh, uh, say 35 to 66. Now you are between 16 to 33. So your process has shifted. Your this is known as statistically significant improvement. You know you are not worried about movement between 50 to 40 and have feeling happy at 35 and feeling bad at 60. We lost in that. No. Actually we have to. This is the new system, your new DNA of the process. The DNA of the process is being changed. Now you're operating in these within these limits. Your control limits have changed, right? So this is how actually you do a project. Well, if you are interested, uh, we have, uh, uh, you can always join our sessions. Uh, I will also tell you how to implement Six Sigma in an organization in a short while, but uh, most of you are asking for uh, how to attend the session, I'll tell you uh, before I proceed further. So would you like to become, let me ask you first, would you like to become expert in these tools and techniques? So if you can just, uh, uh, in the poll, if you can participate. So th those who are showing interest, we'll be happy to send you the details and we'll be, uh, I'll tell you the dates also and I'll tell you the uh, yeah, fees is there because more than 25 people are actually supporting this whole training. It's not that I, I'm the, like you can see my face, but there are lots of people who are uh, making it, bringing it to you, you know, in a very professional way. Uh, which includes our video team also who had clicked or who had done those videos and edited and uh, all the team, all the people, they'll be there to support you for, for, for a lifetime. So if you are interested, yes, thank you. Thanks for your showing interest. So we, uh, you can become a green belt or a master black belt, a black belt, whatever you want. You'll get rid of inability to do nothing in case you, uh, you know, face a problem. In fact, you can do something about it now. Uh, you'll not keep on waiting for promotion. Promotion will come to you. You'll not depend on a job anymore. You can become an independent consultant. We have supported ourselves. We have supported more than 250 independent consultants by making them the master black belt. And then we support. They, they have joined us as a network. And they're doing training programs in multiple languages. That is why I was telling we do trainings in multiple languages. You'll be able to reduce the cost, improve the quality, become a problem solver, consult your own organization. So how you can join our session? Uh, there are dates. Uh, my uh, team, uh, team will share you with the dates. If we can just share Naveen. Yeah. So these are the dates if you are interested in joining the session. Uh, training on weekends. Friday, Saturdays, or Sundays. So 
some people some people we are doing it on saturdays some batches are sundays some batches are fridays whichever batch you want uh we have uh, next batch starting from january 27th which is the weekend batch saturday sunday starting on 27th and friday saturday is also starting on 27th and uh, the weekday two hours every day monday to thursday you can join either morning batch or evening batch most welcome uh, there are some fees applicable but some heavy discounts are also available if you do it today so if you do it today you will receive our power bi training or data science whichever you want it will be completely free if you register for green belt black belt and 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 together if you re uh, uh, register for only green belt then of course uh, fees will be a little higher but uh, if you do a package registration green belt black belt green belt plus black belt or green belt plus black belt master black belt or data plus data science you know you can go for all these packages it it's really worth it and i'll be there to solve your problem i'll and answer your questions this was a webinar so i can't uh, specifically take uh, questions from you uh, of course i'll be there to answer your questions after a while i'll stay back but uh, because sometimes people have the two hour window i am available only for two hours you know some people some of your participants they tell so i'm just trying to tell you all giving all the information so most welcome the timing also i'll tell you and the dates we already told you day at the these are the timing so weekday timings are 8 am to 10 am uh, india time or european time 4:30 am uh, you may not be interested in european time 4:30 uh, but uh, in in case you are going for weekday uh, these are the timings so most of the europeans they join our uh, week uh, weekend try, uh, trainings then we have got uh, yeah so these are the timings of saturdays and sundays so if you are interested please feel free to join us uk time yeah uk time uh, is given a uh, european time i'll just add i think oh, one more one more hour so uh some more free webinars are coming up pmp workshop cphq workshop yellow belt training again data science if you have any friends tell them uh, about these trainings you can also join again one more time my yellow belt session these are all the trainings and i would like you to welcome to my training program in fact uh, uh, i'm looking for, forward to welcome you in my trainings because uh, you know just a minute sorry see Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm there. Right. Uh, we can't see you, sir. Okay. Anyway, I think. Uh, um, okay. No problems. I'll just take uh, take over. Uh, my camera is not working. I think. <laughs> yeah so just to tell uh, about uh, some of the implementations let me tell you what is a typical journey of a lean and six sigma implementation when a typical organization is uh, implementing lean and six sigma how, how do they do that so see typically we choose the project from uh, various uh, uh, verticals or the businesses so when you are looking at Oh yeah, finally I have appeared. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so here uh, when you're looking at uh, selecting the project, you choose the project. You know, we some sometimes ask the senior management, "Tell me about your problems. 
department wise so we ask the customers sometimes the employees they, they come out with some project list of project we assign these projects to the green belts and black belts we form an infrastructure of senior steering committee who will uh, like manage this lean six sigma implementation we'll have senior management also in that and then we'll train the senior management like the directors vice president etc in basics of lean six sigma something like what i did today to you and uh, then i uh, will ask them tell us the improvement opportunities we'll convert them to projects give these allocate these projects to black belts and green belts and then green belts will be trained so first we train the uh, you see here this novartis we uh, i had conducted a training program in switzerland there no there was a basic understanding of for the senior management uh using uh, different techniques and we uh, played a game also a small game sometimes we play a game as well uh, to convince you about the uh, these tools and techniques so senior management got in, uh, you know trained then after that uh, they re- uh, nominated the green belts and black belts so i'm taking some different examples from different industries you know, just to give you a flavor uh so let's say in alphatem also we did the same thing senior management training then after that they uh, nominated the green belts and black belts the team name the one belt. two three and team builder and your slogan one two three green air go okay and your song one two three yeah so you know there's some fun as well in the class <laughs> so uh, they are all they are choosing their slogan their song and they have chosen the projects and they'll be doing the project one two three go let's go let's go let's go we are the champions we are the team wow if you join the world and your team came One, two, three. So even if you join our uh, cl- uh, you know, online session, you will have the fun. So don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, more important is that you should be able to do the project. We we are we are always hand holding you. Now after the training, also we are there to hand hold you. And if you are interested in doing the project yourself, a real project, we will help you. Or otherwise, uh, in the class anyway, we are going to do the project. And once you do the project like typically in an organization like say national healthcare service in uk uh, this person uh, this uh, has he has completed a black belt project he has just presented he, then you get your certificate if it's online you do you don't have to do the project uh, real project etc you do the project in the classroom along with me and you also get a certificate but in reality and you know if you are doing it for in house programs we generally follow this practice well we have alex with us and he has done excellent lean and six sigma projects in national healthcare service and uh, in uh, hospitals so alex would you like to tell us some, something about it hello i am i'm alex wells head of service improvements at the royal liverpool university hospital um i've been really fortunate to present today on how us as a trust are using lean and six sigma principles to deliver better care for our patients um i've presented today on a lot of the work that we've done around how we've improved patient outcomes reducing mortality improving length of stay and also talked about how we can actually realize some financial benefits from that over the past 2 years we've been really fortunate that we've done some good work and it's actually delivered us 2 million pounds worth of quality efficiencies through delivering better patient care so bang muscat also similar success stories uh, hey, then, so we have got many credentials nakel uh, is again another success story my name is mohammed al bayati i am the ceo of nakel through alexis uh, mr amitab has uh, teach me and uh, more than 1000 employee of nakel six sigma and lean processes this uh, this affected our bottom lines by millions of riyals and uh, it 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 is uh, having a big impact in changing our company from a local company to a regional or multinational company thanks to alexis and mr amitab thank you very much yeah so just wanted to anyway this part i have already covered uh 
yeah uh, some more things uh, maybe i'll try to uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, let's say yeah uh, we have got some of the best of the best uh, uh, companies like uh, 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 navin you have some videos uh, like miral yes sir i'll share it yeah. so here uh, you know or other videos like generic videos i think we had ma made some videos uh, generic videos also success stories to get so yeah i i i'm now i'm going to as some videos are being played i am there to answer your questions i'll look at some other questions which uh, you might be uh, Yeah. Uh, so I'm just looking at your questions. Uh, so please okay. feel free to ask the questions. work on how we could increase the reliability of the time it takes to update our queue time boards because as you know every minute that guest waits in a queue line is super important we had the brainstorming session with the team and we went through a few topics and then we chose the most appropriate one for the course the chosen topic was reduce facilities management service request close out time so i was eager to use uh, statistics and data analytics to solve a business challenge one of the challenges we had is the erosion of the retail uh, per capita spend in ferrari world abu dhabi and that was my topic well actually being a, uh, an hr professional recruitment lead time has been always a problem uh, across the board so uh, taking that subject in a specific will help me improve onto the recruitment cycle so what we had worked on was redesigning the product launch process which we've now implemented we had a discussion within our team uh, and the most critical area that we faced was um, was our closing process so uh, we decided among ourselves that this is the one that we should go for Yeah, the course that we did was a week-long uh, online facilitated course. Uh, it was fantastic. It, it showed us the whole methodology behind Lean Six Sigma, and it also provided a various amount of tools that we could be able to use to improve all of the existing processes that we have here in the park. Well, it was one week training. It was very interesting and always energetic in terms of interaction in the class. Every single day has been different, and the knowledge sharing has been uh, remarkable. This gave us a broader perspective to understand the issues, and uh, it gave us opportunity to, to do some brainstorming. And we were able to come up with better solutions from from a wholesome perspective. It was a very stimulating experience where we met every day with the colleagues, uh, all uh, very engaged, eager to learn, and. And uh, keen on uh, and willing to actually uh, uh, pause, step back from their day-to-day -day work to get some new uh, perspectives. So it was really a refreshing uh, exercise. You know, when an issue comes to us, we try to uh, think about it from a Lean Six Sigma perspective. We try to define the issue. We make we make a project charter about it. Uh, we try to analyze it. So it has uh, it has changed the perspective of how we look at issues. Statistics allowed me to understand the root cause of the problem and come up with the very targeted improvement initiatives that we aim at implementing within the year. So every uh, dirham per cap increase would represent uh, one million. revenue uplift uh, in a standard year so the impact can be uh, significant well uh, this program is in benefit uh, not just for me as a recruiter but it helps the whole organization in terms of how we can identify issues how we can look into problems so what's really exciting is that since we completed the course and we implemented all of the changes that we worked through we have 100% seen a decrease in the time that it takes to upload the queue time uh, boards which is really cool and one other really exciting thing is that one of the recommendations that the team and I put forward through uh, in our project for the project I should say is that has now been funded through uh, the business so uh, you'll have to watch this space for more I can't tell you just yet 
I would say uh, satisfaction, quality and experience. And I say that because my project was focused on how we can improve the product launch. So we wanted to get customers satisfied and improve the, the customer experience. And we wanted to improve the quality of the products that we were issuing to guests and the, the overall process that we had within the business to, to launch new products. I would say that it has definitely uh, brought consistency to the team. Um, awesome efficiency for sure and the only other word I can kind of think of is it's brought alignment not only alignment within the department but with all of our rides here also alignment within the business and even with our competitors so it's a win-win. I think the, the biggest personal improvement is giving a framework for doing uh, process improvements. Um, I've always worked in customer experience and so we're always looking for, for new ways to, to how we can improve the customer experience but the, the training is now given a framework and a methodology to make sure that we can be consistent and using the, the best practices to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, uh, so, uh,